Ladies and gentlemen, party people, welcome to Office Hours, the show where I address your SQL Server and Microsoft Data Platform questions. You can put in your questions over there at pollgab.com slash room slash Brento and upvote the questions that you'd like to see me talk through. So let's go through them. Uh, the, today's going to be a speed round where I'm going to address a bunch of questions very quickly that don't require long answers. The first one comes from DBA team who I had to laugh and says, love and appreciate your work and please don't make fun of my question. Uh, I want to create a special database project uh, that can give extra value. Do you have any ideas? Don't ask me. Ask the people who pay your check. What value do you need? What is it that you wish the database would uh, could do but can't today? That's what you should focus on. Don't give them a random, hey, would you like a yellow pony? You know, just go ask them what they would want. Uh, next up, Too Sarcastic asks, oops, oh, Siri pops up. Uh, Too Sarcastic asks, any tips or advice to keep a poker face when you're hearing nonsense from your coworkers? Yes, take a drink. Have a, some coffee, a beer, whatever it is around, and that automatically kind of gives you something else to focus on and gives you something to put in front of your face for a second to kind of stop and reset. Hadar asks, when I'm performing the A part of the death method, how do I avoid adding beneficial indexes for costly queries that are infrequently executed? If a query isn't frequently executed, it shouldn't get an index. The database is tuned for things that we do regularly, but if you want to do something irregular, like every now and then, I'm sorry, but we can't afford to performance tune the database for that because it makes everything else go slower. Crypto Bro asks, uh, do you see any good or common use cases for the new SQL 22, 2022 ledger functionality? Good, yes, common, no. And the documentation kind of gives you some ideas for that. For example, if you had to track every change that was made to an aircraft part, just know that there's going to be an expense and an overhead to doing that. Rick James asks, what is your opinion of AlloyDB for Postgres? I have never touched it. I have no idea what it is. This is even the first time I've ever even heard of it. Um, and he says, is this the Aurora killer? Really, when we're as database professionals, we don't choose the cloud provider. We have to work with whatever cloud provider the company rolled with. So it's not like you'd go, all right, everybody, there's a better database over there. Let's go change our entire company strategy and shift clouds. You'd be fired immediately. Next up, Herb says, what is your opinion of the new SP Invoke Azure uh, REST endpoint functionality? Um, if you want to slow down your database, it's a great way to do it. Why would you have the database call a web service? That's idiotic. Now, if you have something that's not performance critical and you want to go post something as like a status update, I suppose you could. But why would you put anything in the way of production code, especially when there's locking and blocking in the database? Why would you make the database wait for a web service? Build something called an application that can go look at your database and call web services where necessary. Clarence Over says, are there any, <laughs> I think that's an airplane reference, uh, are SQL CLR UDFs any better or more desirable than scalar UDFs? No, because most developers that I know don't know how to track and troubleshoot memory usage in SQL CLR. They just assume that there's not going to be any memory usage, and then they're surprised when their SQL server has memory problems uh, because they weren't doing a good job of memory management over in their code because they never had to do it before. Neil says, I just noticed developers have been setting RCSI on in their app, uh, databases without telling anyone. Should I be concerned? Yes. And we talk about why in the class mastering server tuning. We talk about uh, what metrics you need to look at before and then afterwards uh, implementing RCSI. Drew asks, is coding the first responder kit for different versions of SQL Server painful like coding JavaScript for multiple browser versions? Yes, uh, because the, the problem for me is people will contribute changes without thinking about 
case sensitivity or older uh, SQL Server support. And so it, I end up having to say, well, thanks for the pull request, but now I have to go test it on a bunch of versions and your code doesn't work. So then I got to go back and kind of coach them through that. A never-ending view says, if you're tuning a view that you can't get to complete or show an actual execution plan, will adding a top give you the same plan as running without? Start by getting the estimated execution plan. If you get the estimated plan for the one with the top versus the view itself, that will tell you if they're the same or different. That answers your question. There's a bigger underlying question, which is how do I tune views? If you search that, search for Brent Ozar, how to tune views, I talk about how to do that. Bob the Builder says, what's the largest SQL Server single database size you've ever seen? What challenges did that large size present? I'm going to say off the top of my head, it was 15, 20 terabytes somewhere inside there and multiples of those on one SQL Server. And of course, the, the challenges that it presents are just epic. There's the problems with backup, recovery, check, DB, performance, tuning, all kinds of things. Uh, Curious DBA says, hi Brent, I know you no longer get involved with disaster recovery, but I was wondering if you ever encountered a scenario where a suspect database couldn't be brought into emergency mode. Yes, absolutely. Generally speaking for me, whenever a database goes suspect, the first thing that you want to do is start by recovering from backups. Just don't play around with suspect databases if you can avoid it. Uh, and then we'll do one more. We'll say RSS fees says Albert mentioned on Stack Overflow a tool called Data Sync Agent for SQL Data Sync. I've never heard about it before, but apparently you can use it to migrate or sync. Have you ever used it? I, no, uh, I have not used that. For me, when clients want to go to the cloud, sync tools are kind of a pain in the rear. Uh, trying to keep a database in sync between on-premises and up in the cloud, for me, isn't a really smooth move. What I would rather do is first migrate to a VM in the cloud, run plain old SQL Server up in the cloud, and that way you get rid of the problem of latency and frequent disconnects between on-premises and cloud-based platform-as-a-service type stuff. So you can migrate from on-premises to a VM in the cloud using all the techniques that you already know and love. Log shipping, database mirroring, always-on availability groups, all those kinds of things. Then, once you're up in the cloud in a VM, and latency is very low and network speed is very high or throughput is very high, then it's easier to do things like a backup and restore to get across from the conventional databases or a VM type approach to over as a database as a service. Now, now you can't with things like Azure SQL DB, as far as I remember, you still can't do a database restore to get into there. But then at that point, you can use things that are more conventional, like plain old insert statements, ETL tools like SSIS to keep data in sync between the two. All right, there we go. There's a quick speed round with a whole bunch of questions and answers. Uh, that is all of the Hive upvoted ones. I'll go ahead and clear out the queue so that y'all can get in your next round of questions and upvote the ones that you'd like to see. If you've been watching the Office Hours broadcast for a while and you haven't seen your question covered, that means other people didn't upvote it. Doesn't mean it's a bad question. It just means you're a bad person. You may want to consider posting that question over at dba.com dba.stackexchange.com uh, dba instead. Happy holidays, and I will see y'all on the next Office Hours.